Welcome back. Today we're experimenting with the air track to demonstrate momentum in elastic and inelastic collisions. An air track is a device used to study motion in a low friction environment. The device has small holes along the track. When air is pumped through it, carts can glide across nearly friction free. The original track was invented at Caltech in the mid 1960s and measured approximately one meter long. The air track can be used to study many concepts in physics and mechanics, including Newton's laws, harmonic oscillations, as well as the conservation of energy and momentum. Inertia is the property of matter that allows objects at rest to remain at rest and objects in motion to remain in motion, unless changed by an another force. This is known as the law of inertia, also referred to as Newton's first law of motion. Momentum, on the other hand, is the property of a moving object and is the product of both its mass and velocity. The only way to change an object's inertia is by changing its mass. However, to have momentum, the object has to be moving, and therefore, momentum can be changed by altering either the mass or the velocity, or by applying some kind of force over a time interval. This change in momentum is called impulse. Now that we've covered some of the groundwork, let's get started. In physics, we study momentum in two types of collisions, elastic and inelastic. Elastic collisions are those when two objects collide and move apart with no loss of kinetic energy or momentum. To demonstrate elastic collisions using the air track, set one card at rest near the center of the track. Give the second card a velocity, directing it away from the first cart. The cart will bounce off the end of the track and rebound, reaching a stable speed before colliding with the first cart. In this demonstration, we see that the momentum of the first cart passes to the second cart when the two collide with each other. For the next experiment, set the first cart into motion, and as it's returning back after rebounding off the bumper, set the second cart into motion as well. As you can see here, the velocity is conserved and the carts continue to bounce off of each other. For the last of our elastic collision experiments, we will use carts of differing masses. Place the more massive cart in the middle of the track. Give the smaller cart a velocity away from the first so it bounces off the end bumper. What do you notice about the velocities for both carts after they collide? Now, repeat the same procedure, this time switching the carts. Notice that the velocity is higher when the more massive cart collides with the smaller cart than when the smaller cart collides with the more massive cart. For our final experiment, we will demonstrate inelastic collisions. In an inelastic collision, two objects collide with some loss of kinetic energy due to conversion into some other form of energy. In the real world, nearly all collisions are inelastic. Here we will demonstrate a perfectly inelastic collision, or one where the objects collide and stick together. Start by replacing the bumper on the carts with the Velcro attachments. Place one cart at the midpoint of the track and set the other cart into motion. When they collide, the Velcro connects the two carts and they now move together. Although the kinetic energy will change, the total momentum should be conserved. One advantage to using an air track is the ability to perform motion experiments in one dimension and control nearly all of the external forces acting on the object. Remember, although the air track allows for a nearly frictionless environment, some momentum will be lost and some kinetic energy will always be converted into some other form of energy. These are just a few of the experiments possible. Let us know in the comments how you are using this cool science apparatus and stay tuned for even more on the air track coming soon. Until next time, have fun learning.